praise and hallelujah in the presence of my enemies I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief I raise a hallelujah my weapon is a melody I raise a hallelujah
Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. And every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. We sin runs deep. set aside a people, an entire nation of people, to give his word to, to give to the rest of the world. Nothing else that claims to be Holy Scripture comes anywhere close to the Bible, where the Bible was revealed to a whole nation of witnesses. And when he went, when Moses went up to the mountain and God spoke to Moses, he gave commandments to give to them and to give those commandments from them to us. And the very first one is, I am God and there is nobody else. And don't let there be any other thing or being that you call God. And then the second thing, don't limit me. Don't make some kind of a figure because figures have dimensions and dimensions are limits. And you cannot contain God. It says in Psalm chapter 8, verse 1, Lord, you've set your glory above the heavens. Folks, we haven't found the end of the heavens yet. You know, we're still trying to see how big this universe is, and it just goes on and on. And I can remember in my lifetime what we thought were stars, we have discovered our entire galaxies. It just gets bigger and bigger. And God's above all of that. Don't limit me. And now... Speak my name with respect. Don't disrespect me by the way that you speak. And I don't know if disrespecting is a verb that's in the dictionary, but we know what it means anyway, so I'm going to use it. It's Exodus chapter 20, verse 7. It's the third commandment. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave him unpunished who takes his name in vain. Now, remember when we see the word capitalized, the Lord, that we're talking about the name of God. And the name of God is actually, I am. It's four Hebrew letters. Are they up there? Yeah. Good. Hebrew reads from right to left. That would be my left, but you're right. Well, we read from left to right, but Hebrew goes from right 
to left, and there are four letters that are translated I am. Okay? Remember way back in chapter 3 of Exodus, Moses said, who do I say sent me? And the Lord said, I am who I am. In other words, there never was any time that I had a mama name me. I have always existed. Before there was time, there was God. Try to think too much about that, and you're going to be in a padded cell. But God has always existed before there was time. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. There was never a time that he was not. He's the great I Am. What a perfect name for God. No mama named him. He is. And so when we see these four Hebrew letters, those are the name of God that, that is actually translated I am. This particular commandment scared the Hebrews so much that they decided that they would not pronounce those four letters, that they would not pronounce the name of the great I am. So when they would come to those four letters, they would say, the Lord. Now, the Lord in Hebrew is Adonai. So anytime you hear a Hebrew say the, the word Adonai, he's saying the great I am, whose name I'm not going to pronounce. Now, what's interesting, that first little letter looks like an Allen wrench, Yod. It can be pronounced as a Y, and it can be pronounced as a J. And we don't know. Every other Hebrew word... We know how it's pronounced because the Hebrews pronounce it. But when they come up to this word, we don't know if the first letter is pronounced J as in Jehovah or if it's pronounced Y as in Yahweh. It can be pronounced either way, that little bitty yod there. When Jesus said not a jot or a tittle would depart from God's word till everything's uh, fulfilled, jot is that, word, that letter yod, that little bitty letter yod. Can be pronounced Y can be pronounced J, but we don't know. Because when they would come to those four letters, they would say, Adonai, they would say the Lord. And so consequently, today when people say Jehovah, they might be mispronouncing God's name. When they say Yahweh, they might be mispronouncing God's name. And so what do I do? Well, I say the great I am. Or I say the Lord, because I, I really don't want to mispronounce his name. You know, it kind of bugs Noella. She, she moved from New Mexico to Midwest City when she was eight years old, and she was in the same church for 15 years before we went off to seminary, and there was a lady in that church that called her Novella. For 15 years, she must have heard the word Noella a couple of hundred times, still called her Novella. You know, well, it's not really respectful to mispronounce God's name. So they were so afraid that they would take his name in vain that they just didn't say his name. They would say the Lord. Now, that second letter, hey, it's an H sound. But that third letter, Vav, that looks kind of like this. Vav can be pronounced as a V. Vav can be pronounced as a W. Or vav cannot be pronounced at all. For example, when you come to the Hebrew word shalom, it has vav in it. It's not shalom. Shalom. The vav isn't even pronounced. It's supposed to give an O sound or a U sound. But sometimes it's pronounced as a V, as in Jehovah. And sometimes it's pronounced with a W, as in Yahweh. But sometimes it's not even pronounced at all. So once again, how do you pronounce those four letters? Don't. His name is high and holy. His name is above every other name. And his character goes with that name. And so consequently, the Hebrews, the Lord said, I will not leave him unpunished who takes my name in vain. Whoa, let's just not even pronounce his name. When we come to that holy name, let's just say the Lord, Adonai. And so, that's what we've got, folks. That's how serious it is for his name to be pronounced or honored the right way. Uh, because his character goes with his name. You, you think about the names that some people have. I, I know my name. Every bathroom in the country, you know, is named John, you know. But 
Anyway, your, your name may mean something. And have you noticed that hardly anybody calls their kid Judas? Because of the character that goes with the name. But a whole lot of people in Central America name their child Jesus, Jesus, because of the character that goes with that name. Well, when Moses told the Lord in Exodus 34, and who knows when we're going to get there, but in Exodus 34, when Moses said, would you show me your glory? And the Lord said, you can't look on my face and live, but I'll let myself pass before you. And he passed before Moses, and it says he covered Moses' eyes, and he passed before him, and he said, the Lord, I am. The Lord, the Lord God, compassionate, gracious, slow to anger, abounding in loving kindness and truth, who keeps loving kindness for thousands, who forgives iniquity, transgression, and sin. Yet he will by no means leave the guilty unpunished, visiting the iniquity of fathers on the children and on the grandchildren to the third and fourth generations. That's the character behind God's name. And so thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. So you and I, the first thing that would come to mind would be using God's name to cuss with. You know, wait, boy, you're not supposed to do that. His character goes with his name, and you're not supposed to use his name to cuss with. And frankly, in vain means to just not give any kind of holy attributes to his name at all, to just use his name in a common way. That's why it really bothers me when people say, oh my God, or even abbreviate it, because you're making God's holy righteous name an exclamation point, an expression. You know, I, I, don't, I don't think we ought to do that. When somebody says, I'm going to do something, and they want to really stress what they're going to say, and, and, they, and, and they say, by God, you know, I don't think you ought to do that. I really don't think you ought to do that. His name is high and holy and is not supposed to be used as an interjection, as an exclamation point. I had a fishing buddy when I was pastoring in Midwest City, and every time he referred to the Lord, he would say, the good Lord. One time he told me, I don't ever want to use the Lord's name without honoring the Lord's name. And that's why I always say the good Lord. You know, I understand that. I think there's a lot to that. So, of course, don't use his name as just an expression. But also, he says, don't swear falsely by my name. That's Leviticus 19.12. So, you're not supposed to say, I swear by the name of, who knows how to pronounce it, of Adonai. And you know what they started doing? They were so afraid of swearing falsely by the Lord's name that they didn't swear by the Lord's name at all. By the time we got to the days of Jesus, they would swear by the temple, swear by the altar, swear by the city of Jerusalem, swear by their head. And Jesus made a point of that because they decided that if they could play some little gymnastics with that, that maybe they could not keep their oath. And so the Pharisees would say, well, you swear by the altar, you don't have to keep your oath. But if you swear by the gift that's on the altar, then you have to keep your oath. Where'd that come from? You know, they just made that up. You can swear by the temple and not necessarily keep your oath. But if you swear by the gold that's on the temple, then you have to keep it. And Jesus said, you know, you, that's foolish. You shouldn't have to swear at all. Your yes should be yes and your no should be no. And so perjury, you know, put your hand on the Bible and... You swear in the Lord's name that you're going to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. It's a very serious thing if you swear by God's name that you're going to tell the truth, and then you don't. So if you use his name to curse with, or if you swear falsely by his name, and I, you know, most of us would sit here and go, oh, yeah, okay, you know, I don't use God's name in vain that way, and I really don't swear at all. If I had to in court, I guess I would. But you know, there's more to it. Whenever David did what he did with Bathsheba and then had her husband put to death, the prophet Nathan came to Jesus and of course, to Jesus, good grief, to David and told David because of his sin, he said, you have given opportunity for the enemies of God to blaspheme. 
because you've worn the name of God and then you have defamed the name of God by your behavior. The Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 2 verse 24 speaking about Jews who have the law but don't keep the law. And he says, the name of God is blasphemed among, among the Gentiles because of you. Unbelievers criticize and blaspheme the name of God because of the behavior of so-called believers. Paul put it this way in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. The Lord knows those who are his and everyone who names the name of the Lord is to abstain from evil. You name the name of the Lord. In other words, you identify yourself as a Christian. Jesus Christ is my Lord. Jesus Christ is my Savior. I belong to Jesus. I'm a Christian. You live up to that name. You don't give the enemies of the Lord an opportunity to blaspheme because of your behavior. A believer in Jesus Christ ought not to be going to drinking parties. A believer in the Lord Jesus Christ ought not to be shacking up with his girlfriend. A believer in the Lord Jesus Christ ought not to be cheating people in business. Because with his name is his reputation. And the Bible says that believers are ambassadors for Jesus Christ. We represent Jesus to the world. The Bible says we're supposed to show the fruit of the spirit of Jesus in our lives. That people are supposed to look at us and we're supposed to be character-wise character -wise, like a bunch of little Jesuses walking around. That's what they're supposed to see. And that yet you have people like Mahatma Gandhi who said, well, Christians are going to have to act more like Christians if I'm going to consider being one. I heard about a man who invited his dentist to go to church with him. And he says, I'm not going to go to your church because you got people there who are praising the Lord through teeth that they won't pay for. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. And so when people hear your words and people see the way that you live and the way that you deal with other people, do you honor the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the way that you walk and the way that you talk? Well, could we put it on the positive side? I mean, after all, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of Christ indwells a believer. And if a believer yields himself to the control of the Holy Spirit, then Christ actually lives his life through that person. And there's, there's the possibility of living a godly, God-honoring life that wasn't possible before you became a Christian. That's the wonderful thing about the new law, the new covenant that's in Jesus Christ, is that the power of God to live a godly life is actually within a believer. And so could we look at it from the positive side? Once again, the Apostle Paul, 1 Corinthians 10, 31, whether you eat, whether you drink, whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. So instead of worrying about, oh man, I don't want to dishonor God with my lips, how about, <clears throat> I want to honor God. The positive side of it. And better still, don't you want to honor people that you love? You know, I love Noella Coker. Or is it Novella? I love Noella Coker. Uh, she's been my girlfriend since 1969, and she's been my wife since 1972. And I want her honored. I want people to speak well of her, and I speak well of her. And it's like, I, I don't walk around going, boy, I need to be careful and not say bad things about Noella. Because I love her. And since I love her, I want her to be honored. And so in the same way, what did the Bible say, New Testament-wise, about how the whole law, the Ten Commandments plus every other commandment, how is it all fulfilled? In one word, love. And the Bible says God is love, describing the very character of God, and it says that the Spirit of God, who is love, indwells a believer. And since that is the case, you and I, when we yield ourselves to the control of the Lord and when we get to know the Lord better and better, we get to love him more and more and we love people more and more. And you're not going to want to dishonor God with your lips. You're going to want to honor him if you love him.
So what did he tell them to wear on their hand and on their head? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. I remember several years ago, I said, the law is fulfilled and love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbor by yourself. Well, boy, I didn't get away with that. You know, I had some people, <clears throat> well, if you love your neighbor, you ought to do it by yourself, preacher, you know. Well, anyway, love your neighbor as yourself. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. How do you do that? You let the Spirit of God take charge. And so if that's the case, all these Ten Commandments, you're not going to have to go, okay, how am I doing with number nine? How am I doing with number three? How am I doing with number one? You, you, you don't have to worry about that if the Spirit of God's got charge of you. Because you're loving God and you're loving people and you won't be wanting to dishonor anybody, especially him. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's time to meditate. Ask the band to come and ask you to ask the Lord if there's anything in your life that's dishonoring his holy name. Um, David prayed for the Lord to take charge of the words that he said. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. He also said in Psalm 142, set a guard over my lips. You know, it's, I, this popped into my head. I thought I was done. But the preacher was fixing the fence at the church, and there was a little boy watching him. And finally, the preacher said, is there something I can do for you? And the little boy said, no, I'm just waiting. He said, what are you waiting for? He said, I'm waiting to see what the preacher says when he hits his finger. Okay. That's the kind of control that you and I need to have. Okay. And so what does come out of your mouth? Well, you know, Jesus said what comes out of your mouth is actually what's inside your heart. If there is anger and bitterness and a short temper inside your heart, you might hide it for a while, but at the wrong kind of moment, the wrong thing's going to come out. And so the important thing for you and me is this morning, God, do you have charge of my heart? The words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, acceptable in your sight. Okay, God bless you while we meditate.